Welcome everyone. Today we're going to go over the supply chain network design uh, model, the first one and part one. And uh, we're going to show you how easily can uh, we do a so-called supply chain network uh, using minimum cost uh, network flow problem. The um, example we have is directly from directly from uh, Groby's website. You can download it from here directly. Um, <clears throat> we start talking about the model uh, problem description first. <clears throat> we have a six uh, customer, which is uh, basically a retail store, each one with a known demand for product. And customer demand has to be satisfied by four depots or hub. Um, or directly from the set of a two factory. Uh, each depot support a maximum uh, capacity, or we call a throughput in those depots, and each factory only can produce a certain amount of uh, a product. And also there's so-called cost associated to transporting the product between uh, the de uh, factory to the depot, uh, factory to the uh, retail store and the depot to the retail store. So my objective is trying to minimize the overall uh, transportation costs while satisfying all the uh, demand from the <coughs> from the retail store and also uh, with the capacity limit from the factory and the depot throughput. Here I give you uh, we we'll present the <coughs> Two factory Liverpool in Brighton's. Uh, Liverpool has a 1,500,000 uh, ton, ton uh, uh, sorry, <coughs> 150,000 ton, and the Brighton has 200,000 tons of supply. Sorry. And the depots are Fort City, Newcastle, Birmingham, London, and Exeter. And each one of them has a, is the throughput limitation. And finally, the customer is denoted by C1 all the way to C6 with a separate uh, individual demand <coughs> for a period. Finally, we're trying to give you the network design for each one of the arc, okay, edges between a source to a destination, it has associated the transportation cost. This table shows for on the top is the source and the bottoms on the left hand right uh, left hand side is the destination. For example, Liverpool to Newcastle is fifty cents per ton. And from Liverpool to London is one dollar a month uh, per ton and so on and so forth and Liverpool to one of uh, only ships to uh, <coughs> uh, retail store one, three, four, and six. And Brighton uh, only shipped to uh, the first C1, the first retail store, with the $2 per ton cost. Also, this four <coughs> depot actually supply, mainly supply to f f other uh, <coughs> retail store respectively. Okay, so this is basically from and to the source and destination pair, which is constructing our supply chain network. Here we're talking about the model formulation. First we have uh, two uh, factories, actually two of them in there. And depots I have four customer I have six of them right here and the cities represents the what the unions of factory depots and customer all together so we have 12 cities all together the input parameters I need for this problem first is the cost associates with the uh, a pair of source and destination, which is in this table given. From the source to destination, the unit cost of transporting one ton of uh, product. Supply uh, for a particular factory, F, 
okay? It is the maximum possible supply for that factory. Through, and basically means the maximum possible throughput uh, for that particular depot D. Finally, the demand is the <coughs> uh, demand for uh, each one of the retail store C. Our decision variable is F uh, called a flow for a pair of S and T. Okay, there's a quantity of goods that ship from the source to the des specific destination. My objective function is trying to minimize the overall cost times uh, the flow. All right. I have four constraints in this model, and the first two are really straightforward. The first one is the <coughs> factory output has to be below its uh, total supply capacity, maximum capacity for that factory. The sigma, all the outf uh, outgoing flow for factory F to all the other city has to be less than equal to the supply. The second constraint says all the, uh, for each one of the customer or the retail store, um, total incoming flow has to satisfy that demand, equal to that demand. So for city as a source, any uh, some other city incoming to a retail store C, and it should be equals to the demand of that particular retail store. The third constraint called flow conservation constraint. For all the depot, the incoming flow has to be equal to out outgoing flow. Since the depot don't produce any supply and don't have any demand, okay? So the incoming flow from all the, uh, total incoming flow from all the sources to a particular depot D equals to from all the uh, destination, summing up all the destination for depot D to outside uh, destination and has to be equal. Finally, the throughput of each one of the depot has to set uh, below certain throughput capacity for that particular depot. For the depot D, for example, summing up all the incoming source, incoming flow, has to be less than equals to the throughput of that depot. Okay, here is the illustration of our supply chain network. We have two factory, four depot, and six total retail store. And that's their relationship. So this problem can be uh, formulated as a general type of uh, minimum cost uh, <clears throat> network flow problem, okay, uh, with the capacity on the transshipment node, transshipment node. Okay, to run this, we um, first in, uh, import the so-called Garobi Python API, okay, both of them. But here I have an Im importer also a so-called Pandas. Pandas is the data management uh, library for Python as popularly used for data science and database application, big data. And Panda can be used to handling a couple million uh, records or data, uh, data point uh, efficiently. So uh, we have actually a tutorial on the Pandas lecture, uh, Pandas library individually at the beginning of the semester. So here I'm not going to go into the detail. We're going to just using that later on. Once we get a solution, we're using Panda data frame to organize my uh, solution and print it out. Okay, after we in, uh, import all these library and then we give uh, input data. The input data are all using so-called dictionary type of data structure. First is the supply 
data uh, dictionary based on the pair of red, which is the factory and its maximum capacity output. Okay, Liver, uh, Liverpool and Brighton. Second is the through, basically is the throughput for each one of the depot, Newcastle, Birmingham, Linton, Exeter's, each one of has its maxima uh, capacity, flowing capacity. Final is the demand dictionary has <coughs> retail stores C1 to C6 and their corresponding demand. The next, we're using the Groby Matai uh, dictionary uh, structure. Uh, has a two set, one we call the arcs, and associated cost with that arc. And the arc is a pair of a source and destination pair, which is here we have a Liverpool to New Has uh, Newcastle, and its unit cost is 50 cents. Okay, Liverpool to Birmingham is also 50 cents. And so on and so forth to all the depot and to all the customer. So this is basically the information I, we given and this table, which is using a multi-dictionary from Gorobi uh, data set and to organize it. <coughs> I'm going to access queue this. We're going to see if adding the <coughs> model, okay? And the model is a flow, actually adding variable. And here is a very uh, easy way to define your objective function. Objective function is basically the cost and associated with the each arc. So it basically means is we try to achieve that particular objective function, cost times the flow individually. So I'm going to using arcs. So the flow has two um, <coughs> tuple. One is the source, one is the destination. So the objective is the cause of that particular of flow on that particular arc. And <coughs> so that defines my objective function. Instead of, we can also use a separate uh, model, add objective and uh, type of uh, uh, statement. But here, using uh, OBJ equal to cost is just implying this is the total cost we're trying to minimize. OK? And we define the model. I'm using uh, Gorobi model called supply network design. And using model as uh, abbreviation with also, we call it handler, basically. And we're using the model throughout to add a variable, add constraint, and so on and so forth. Like we said before, we have four separate constraints, factory output, customer demand, depot flow conservation, and depot capacity. So here is the way we're defining our <coughs> constraint. The first type of constraint is the factory capacity limitation. First, I'm extracting the supply uh, key, which is the Liverpool and Brighton, uh, into a set we call the factories, okay? Based on that, we add constraints, and the GP quicksum basically is the summation of the flow selected by particular factory to all the destination. So summing up from factory to all the destination. It's less than equal to the supply, total maximum supply of that factory. And the factory is in the factory's uh, set uh, index. Okay. So we're trying to using the syntax a little bit strange, but this is we're using uh, Gorobi's uh, quick sum function. Look at the second constraint, we uh, can get used to it. And we get all the keys from the cust uh, demand uh, dictionary, and we call the customers. And customer flow, which is adding constraint, uh, first here what we're trying to do is, we're going to sum all the flow for all the source to the customer retail store as a destination, 
equals to the demand of that particular retail store customer and the customers in the customer's uh, set. Okay, the second constraint is satisfying all the demand for the retail store. The third one is for the depots, we call the flow conservation constraint. We get a key from the th through dictionary, and which means give me Newcastle's and Birmingham, London's, and Exeter. What it means, look at this equation uh, constraint added. First is quick sum of flow for all, from depot, particular depot, to all summing up all the destination it has should be equals to the second one. The right hand side is summation of the, all the flow from everywhere to into that depot. So the first part is outgoing flow equals to incoming flow for that depot. And depots and the depots as index set. So this is a flow conservation constraint. Finally, the depots, each one of the depots has its uh, throughput capacity. We're going to add a, uh, a set of a constraint for all the incoming flow, okay, summation of the flow from all the sources to that particular depot is less than or equal to the throughput of that depot. And depots is in the depots. Okay. So I'm going to execute these four constraints, add these four constraints. One, two, three, and four. Once we're done adding the variable, define, imply the con objective function, then we can actually solve the problem. A problem takes seven iteration to solve, actually, and fairly straightforward. Uh, <coughs> We talk about why the solution actually are uh, integer in, uh, in the lect uh, lectures, and this is models actually total mod uh, modular type of uh, uh, data structure. So the product uh, for all customers satisfied total cost is one hundred ninety-eight thousand five hundred dollars, and. We're trying to print out the solution. We we'll print out a solution. We're going to using a Panda data frame, PD dot data frame. Which is PD is abbreviation for Panda. When I import it, it has a three column from to and flow, which is the solution. We call this one called uh, sorry, call this one product flow. Get a for loop, the arcs and the arcs. Okay solution of arcs for each one of the flow arcs dot x is, if it's greater than uh, 10 to the minus 6 which is greater than 0 I'm going to add that to the data frame so the product flow append means I'm adding a row into that data frame the first one is a from is using arc the first tuple which means let's take a look we've done this before so if you see the arcs, it has a pair of a source and destination. Okay, so we're using that pair. The first one is arc zero, which is the source. Arc one is the destination. <coughs> so here from and the destination two, and the flow is the flow of dot x is the solution, final solution, the optimal solution from uh, generate by Garobi. And here we're just trying to <coughs> uh, for loop through this and then we actually form a data frame called part of flow. I'm adding each row and here what you see and the finally just part of flow is printing out the entire data frame is the from the source destination and the optimal flow design uh, figured out by the Garobi uh, solver. So Liverpool sent it to uh, retail one and six, and therefore nothing to the depot. Okay, Brighton's actually supply three different 
uh, depots, and each one of the depots actually satisfying some of the uh, <coughs> retail store as well. You can find this uh, structure problems in uh, the references I have, okay? Okay, and over here. So this is a simple rudimentary structure for the supply chain network. We have another one with a little bit more features and we'll talk about it in the next uh, lecture video. We'll see you in the next video.